Hey there, good morning everybody, it's Jane. I'm trying to find a spot in my studio here that I don't have the direct sunlight in my face. Though I am not complaining, I love, love, love the sun. Um, I'm just getting my link, there we go, for my text people so I could let everybody know that I am live and we're going to be decorating some oops I gotta send it to everybody decorating some eggs with iron orchid if anybody's interested in being in my little text club my text group um, I text when I go live and I text um, like yesterday I texted people that I had some I new iron orchid in and some stuff back in stock and all that kind of good stuff Here's the number, 860-385-6369. <laughs> Just text hello and I'll put you on my list. I won't bombard you. Um, yesterday was special. I, did, I had two texts that went out. And I want to remind people that are signed up that bought the Antique Finish Workshop, you should have gotten an email when I registered you for the workshop and also a welcome email that lets you know what's going on. It has a link to our private Facebook group. If you didn't get that, let me know and I will, you know, get you hooked up with that. And if you're interested in taking the antique finish workshop, it is a virtual recorded workshop with a lot of lessons. Um, you can totally sign up for that. You can go to gchalkmercantile.com under virtual workshop. You can go to um, create.surfaceanthology.com and it's right there. It's $27 and you can learn all about creating an authentic antique painted finish. So now let's get to what we're doing. I was inspired by my friend Joni. Hey, Barb, you're up early in Portland, Oregon. You're across the country. <laughs> Hi there, Barb. Thanks for joining me. Um, I was inspired by my friend Joni of Weathered Wings. Her, she did these giant eggs, and I call these ostrich eggs. <laughs> so I have a bunch of paper mache eggs that... I've been painting and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try out what Joni was doing and put some molds on these. And then I'm going to show you how I want to display them. Here's a little show and tell really quick. I have, we're going to be using, actually, let me show you the picture first. This is my idea. Let me know what you think. See, I have this really beautiful, um, candle holder, candelabra really. And I thought I'd put my eggs, the big giant egg in the middle and little ones around it. But I'm not gonna go with the colors that you see there except for the middle one. I'm gonna keep it this blue that I created and then the other ones I'm going to paint white and all the molds I'm gonna keep white. So that's my idea. And let's see, there I am back again. And here is this I'll show it to you sideways. Here is the, the candelabra. It's pretty big, it's metal and wood. I love it. I had it in my shop when I had a shop and it never sold, so I got to bring it home and I absolutely love it. And what I had hanging off of it, when I'm not painting, um, oh, Barb, thank you. That made my day. Barb is telling me, and this is so sweet, that she loves watching me and she's new to my site. Welcome, Barb. I appreciate that. And all of us that do that really love to hear that, honestly, because it's like I didn't go to school to be on the news or anything like that. <laughs> I actually went to art school. And it does. It takes a little bravery to get up here and to have somebody like Barb tell us that they really appreciate it, they like watching, means everything. It really does. So this is what, when I'm not painting and making these things, I'm a needlework person. And these little strawberries I made with 
silk velvet and silk ribbon. I used to teach silk ribbon embroidery, which I really want to do again. But these were hanging from that um, candelabra. And they actually have the iron that you use, you know, the, sh the shards to sharpen needles. So aren't those pretty though? And they are so springy. So after Easter, I'm going to hang them back up and display them. Now I'm going to move them so I don't get paint on them. So what I'm thinking, and I'll sh I'm going to show you with my little eggs how I paint these, but my big eggs, my ostrich eggs, are already painted. I did these, honestly, a few years ago. And you can see they're painted in milk paint, Miss Mustard Seed milk paint, and a little chippy um, with white underneath. And that... And I love this blue. I, I mixed up this blue and I couldn't tell you what the formula is. This one didn't chip as much. So we're going to be gluing on the chippy one because that's the look I'm going for. But let me show you how I'm going to paint. These are going to be painted. My little eggs are just going to be painted in mud paint, which I love. It's my new line. And I'm going to paint these white because I want the white eggs around the blue egg. So it's just, it's called Simply White. It's really beautiful. And all I do, and I've got a sheet of wax paper. When you're doing something like this, it's a really good idea to have wax paper next to you because then you can just lay down whatever's drying and you don't have to worry about it sticking. So I've got a little artist brush and I just take these eggs. These don't have holes in them. And you can see with this, the big giant one, they did. And I used these skewers. And I actually brought skewers thinking the little eggs have holes. They don't. So I'm just going to hold. <laughs> you can see where I held it. Here and here. And just brush on my white paint. And for me, I don't want these to be perfect. I kind of want them to go with the look of that candelabra, um, it's kind of, what what would we call that? I, I would really call that shabby chic. Like the real, um, God, what's her name? Who did the shabby chic? Who does the shabby chic? I totally forgot. But this is it. What I would do is just paint it like that, right? I'm going to have two spots where my fingers were holding it. Once it's dry, I'll just hold it the other way and, and touch those up. So I'll be doing all of these. And look at this little egg holder. Could you just die? It's so cute. I have this little egg hole. I, I used to buy a lot of this stuff for my shop, and now I'm going through it. But how cute is that? So when they're not on the candelabra, I could stick them in this little egg holder. So I'll be painting all of those white, but then the fun, the fun part, and hopefully this egg will dry so I could show you how I do the little ones. It's the big egg. So I've got some iron orchid that I already made, and these are dry. So I could put the flowers on and I'm going to do that. How cool is that? Have you ever seen the Fabergé eggs? The, the, they're so beautiful. But I just want to kind of put, you know, the bee and the little flowers around. But the bee needs to be, the bee needs to be um, flexible. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm thinking that I might do the kind of leaves, the laurel wreath leaves going around. So I'm gonna be making some molds. So grab your iron orchid mold. I use this laurel over and over and over again, but there's so many pretty ones. You can do the cameos on the egg. They would look really beautiful. I've got. I've got so many, but I'm gonna stick with the laurel today. So grab your cornstarch, and I'm gonna move this just a little bit. There we go. 
and you just brush some of that in. I think I'll do two of these. And this really, really does stop the clay from sticking. I'm using the iron orchid paper clay and we don't want it to stick. Let's see, we'll do some of the little bees. Maybe we'll see what the bow looks like. Can I give it a smack, get rid of the excess? Grab my clay. And let me tell you, when you get your clay, it's gotta be kept airtight because it's air dry clay and it will start to harden up. And I was not as good as I should have been with this and it did start to get a little firm. So you really do have to keep it airtight. I can get this out. Take off a hank. And I'm just gonna kind of roll it out to fit into, and of course I didn't bring over my, I'll use my fingers. Joni uses her fingers and I saw her and I have started to do that. I usually will use like a plastic, like a credit card or something like that to um, push off the clay, but you can use your fingers too. All right, I'm gonna need a little bit more. And you just press it in really well and get into all those details and then push, oops, push the clay off. It wants to come out already. And I absolutely, this is my favorite clay. I've tried a lot of them. I love this. And I haven't done, I think Joni does, and also my friend Kim of For the Nest, they use the resins. I haven't done that yet. Resin or epoxy. They might be the same thing. Okay, so when you do that, right, it's all filled up, just bend it, and out it comes really, really easily. So there it is, and I'm gonna be gluing this on wet. See, I really like how that looks around the middle. And the, pro the only issue that I can see is this might not be absolutely perfect all the way around. And you know what, that's not a big deal. It'll be what it will be. If you really want your, you know, when you're decorating and you want it to be in the same spot all the way around, you know, in the middle or two thirds up, just measure up. You could just take a, a um, measuring tape and measure up from your bottom and just make a little mark and then you can line up your mold. I'm going to eyeball it. <laughs> all right. Now, the other one. Now that I have a grandson, I am more into decorating, like I used to do when my three sons were young. And um, he gets a big kick out of that, for sure. All right, so there's the second part. And again, I'm just removing it pushing it off with my finger. If you do need for it to be really nice and flat, a credit card works very well. Or if you guys have the Iron Orchid transfers, that little burnishing tool, that little plastic tool works really well. And I don't know where mine is. <laughs> I'm trying to do a little spring organizing. Of, of all these tools, painting tools, craft tools, and it is, I don't know. I think you just have to do, I, I have this expectation that I'm gonna organize my workshop 
it's gonna happen in a day and that's it. And when it doesn't, I get like really discouraged and I have to tell myself, this is, this is going to be a good couple of weeks to get your stuff organized, Jane. All right, so here's the egg. And I think what I'm gonna do now is put, I'm gonna rest my egg in this plastic so it stops rolling. But I'm gonna eyeball and start with this laurel leaf going around. So I've got a little Natural Bristle Artist brush. It's really old, as you can see. And I'm gonna use um, Tight Bond, it's quick and thick glue. You can also use Aileen's Tacky Glue, but you need something that's a little firm like this, so if you stand your egg up to dry or whatever, your mold doesn't slide down. So I just squeeze some of this out on a piece of cardboard. And I love the tight bond. You know why? It's because of this, the cap. It just stays on, it keeps it from getting plugged up and it makes my life easier. Okay, so take your wet mold, just put it right across the palm of my hand and brush on some of that tight bond. And be generous, we want these to really stick. Okay, put my brush over here. Now, let's see. I'm using the camera, I'm going up a little bit like that. Pretty, pretty, I just love it. I love this mold so much, I am gonna get I'm gonna open up another one, I saw them, and I'm gonna open up another one and try baking. There are people who are making cookies and all kinds of beautiful things with these molds. All right, so there's one side, and these are flexible. When you put them on wet like this, I don't wanna get glue in my mold, you can really kind of move them around for a few minutes while you get them just where you want them. All right, now for the other side. And I'm gonna look and plan here. I want it like that. So flip it over, same thing. The other glue that's really good is the Elmer's wood glue. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna flip this over. And let's see where this, yep, it overlaps. So, I'm gonna move it around. And a good thing to do when you get into this situation, first, I should have tried it out without the glue on it, but you could move it around because it is still wet. So I'm gonna push this and move that, and I'll just kind of have one on top of the other like that and I can put another mold right over that to kind of join that. But now I'm just making sure these are at the same height. And you see how nicely that glue just holds all the mold down. All right, so now now I'll try some stuff out. We've got like our main design element here. And I could put 
a B there like that to kind of join it. I also have these little flowers. Right, that looks really pretty. But I think I really like the bee to start with right there. I'm gonna treat this as the front of my design. So I really, really like that. So I have to make a wet one though. I cannot put him on because I need this all to kind of work together. All right, so grab your mold. And I'm also debating whether I want to leaf these, put some gold leaf on when they're, or silver, when they're dry. We'll see how it looks. And press down, I'm looking at this now. Take your time, these, these are less delicate than you think. But make sure you press your mold really onto your surface. All right, let's put a B down. Oh, again, I did it. There we go. I'm putting them right back in. This is the only problem. It's <laughs> sticking to my fingers and the molds want to come up. Whoops. There he goes. All right. There's the wet bee. Should I have him go up? Yeah, I like that. So what I'm going to do, just put some more glue right on the back of the bee. Place him down. Now it doesn't have to. Hi, Sue. Have you done any frame molds? Oh yeah, so many. I'm obsessed with the frame mold, Sue, and the um, cameo molds. And of course the laurel mold. But the frames would look really cute on an egg too. You could put a little frame Decoupage, a little image in the middle of the frame when it's dry. So cute. All right, so there's my B, who has kind of joined that overlap that I had. And now what I can do is take my flowers. And see if I like these. It's really great. Another tool you guys have. We all have iPhones. We all have smartphones. Before you commit to anything, kind of place stuff down and take a picture of it and see if you like it. You know, see if you like that. Sue, so if you go to my um, YouTube channel, Surface Anthology, I have got a lot of um, videos using the molds, and I did a whole gallery wall um, tray, making a mini gallery wall using the frames and cameo molds. I love them, I really do. You can make ornaments, all kinds of stuff. So, I'm moving these little flowers around, and you know what, I don't like it. I just like it just like this. I think it's really sweet. We've got the little bay, and I love it. What I can show you guys is what the little flowers will look like on Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like those. Maybe I'll do a B on each one of the little eggs. That's what I'm gonna do. So let's see how our egg is doing. It's pretty dry. I'm gonna just, and I have my blow dryer, so I can do that. Oh, of course I had to 
close this. Oh, Sue, you're so welcome. You're going to, once you start with that frames mold, you're going to be like a maniac. <laughs> because it's just endless, endless, endless possibilities. And the cookies and chocolates that people made with those frames mold, the frames mold, are just amazing. I kept it to ornaments and um, the gallery wall. And it's just, they're incredible. Okay, so let me, so there's our little white egg. And I'm just going to dry it with my blow dryer. And then I'll show you what they're going to look like with some bees on them. If I can get to my blow dryer. There we go. So let's make another B and you know I'll show here's the frame mold that Sue is talking about and I have to tell you guys there's some new stuff on the horizon on IOD and I've got new iron orchid in already and I've got more new iron orchid coming in so you're gonna be really excited but here are the frames molds and you see you know how you would make the whole mold and then you can put images right over you know where these little concave um, areas are and in fact I did um, and Sue you could you'll see this I'm pretty sure I did it yeah it's on YouTube I put a cameo on top of a frame and oh I love it so I'm with you I love them Okay, let's grab, don't get paint on your molds. <laughs> I put a little cornstarch and I'm using the small B. Grab some of my clay. That's already, because I didn't put it back in the bag, it's already starting to dry out. Okay. There we go. And just grab that glue. Now you could paint these while they're wet, but I'm gonna give you a little warning. If you paint them fresh, 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 and you're rubbing that brush over the top of your design, it can really, you can lose a lot of the detail. So I would tell you to glue them on and then wait about a half an hour to an hour for like a crust to form on the top and then paint. So you keep the detail. All right. So there's my little B, white on white, which I love. And I think these would look really, really cute once they're dry, if I put some gold leaf or silver leaf on them. But I love that. And for this one, I think I'll do, actually, you know what? I'm going to do it on this egg, the bow. I really want to try the bow because I use the bow over and over again. And that is this mold. Let's give that a shot. My dining room is going to be very fancy <laughs> this Easter for sure. All right, so I just take a big chunk of that clay, press down. And what I'm trying to do is Everything that I'm making with you guys is something that I'll actually use in my home or as a gift, something like that. I don't want to 
just kind of make stuff for the sake of making it. So I did, I looked around and I'm like, what can I do that I'm going to use and display? All right, same thing, you bend it. Pull that out, I love this mold. <gasps> All right, take your giant egg and I'm gonna move my little bee guy, put him over here on my wax paper. All right, and I'm using my camera to see where do I want that. This really reminds me of a Fabergé egg. Yes, just like that. Sue, it is. Sue's asking me, is Chalk Mercantile the site to order my products? It is. And being the squirrel that I am, Sue... Um, Chalk Mercantile was my original business that I started, God, in 2009 when I moved back to Connecticut from California. And I was kind of known as the paint lady. That was my nickname. And I wanted to create, um, and I, I guess it's like an education site, right? So because I teach decorative painting, I was teaching needlework, quilting, I do all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, what can I call it? Because chalk mercantile, everybody associates with my shop and the chalk paint. It was actually named after, I have this giant Victorian chalkboard made from slate. It's beautiful, it's down in my basement now. And um, that's what it was named after. But Anyway, I came up with surface anthology because I'm always, you know, when you're embroidering, uh, sewing, anything, you're, you're decorating the surface. So that's why I came up with surface anthology. So that's where you would go for my workshops, my membership, that kind of thing. All right, so here's the bow. And you see I'm kind of shifting it around, moving it around to get it just where I wanted want it. Now listen, let me tell you, when you do this, when you shift it around, hang on and I'll show you. You can get, see the glue is right there. So I am going to use a clean brush with some water to get rid of that. Because if you have a matte surface like mine is, kind of, this kind of reminds me of Wedgwood, you know, the, the blue with the white. You don't want the glue being shiny. So I'm going to remove that. Hey, Kim. Kim is for the nest. Kim, what do you use in your molds? Do you use a resin or is it an epoxy? Kim and I and Tammy of Flippin' Furniture and Joni of Weathered Wings are all, we all created a group called The Painted Cottage. And Kim, who is from For the Nest with the number four, was using this cool, um, Kim, tell us what it was. Was it epoxy? And it created a really perfect mold that was really, really neat. I don't use it. I use the paper clay, but I love what she was using. So I, I, she'll have to tell us about that. So now to get rid of that glue, getting back to this, I just take an artist brush into some clean water and I just tease that away, rinse my brush, and I can actually see it coming out. The other option would be to touch up with the paint, but you know, I may I mix this color and um, ages ago. I am not going to go through that for these eggs. Oh, it was, okay, so Kim is saying she also uses the air dry clay. Kim and I and Joni of Weathered Wings, we all are iron orchid stock us. Yeah, it was a two-part resin that she used. It was really cool. If any of you guys have used that stuff, let me know what you think and what brand you use because it's really intriguing. 
And Kim is saying, it's great to use on a flat surface, but would not work on the eggs. Oh, since it dries hard and not flexible. So that's it, you guys. So I guess, Kim, if I wanted to make like ornaments, say I wanted to make ornaments from the cameo mold, and I want them just to be flat, then I can use the two-part resin for that. Okay, so there's the big difference, and I didn't know that. All right, here is my very kind of Fabergé egg uh, crossed with Wedgwood <laughs> um, egg. I love that. I love that. I love it with a little uh, bow. I think it's really sweet. So this is what I'm going to end with. And I'm going to take, and I'll, I'll take pictures of it. It might look crazy. I'll show you guys again. Oh, you love my eggs. Oh, thank you. Kim is so sweet. So here's Kim. This is what I'm doing. But I kind of, you know, I'm doing my eggs over again. So I will take pictures of this in my dining room. At the very least, my grandson Mateo is going to get a kick out of these eggs with the little bees, we go outside and we go on little nature walks. So I show him, you know, what's going on now. There's always something going on in nature and kids just love it. He created a rock collection the other day because it was so muddy. But I'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket on that candelabra and I'll take some pictures and I may even add a little gold leaf to these just to kind of um, zhuzh them up a little bit. All right. Oh, Kim, thank you for joining me, Sue, Barb. Um, oh, I'm really, really happy that you guys joined me for a little bit of spring crafting. So share your stuff. Join the Painted Cottage Facebook group. We're all there. We have workshops. We have all kinds of neat stuff going on in there. And show us what you're doing, what you're working on. Don't be shy. It's so nice to share your creations. It's nice to show them off. It's also great because you're inspiring other people in the group. I always look for inspiration. I know some artists that are in their 80s, really, really successful artists. And they don't just work in a vacuum. They're always looking for inspiration. They look to inspire others. And that's what it's all about. I, you know it, Kim. Kim's like, of course you'll add gold. I'm going to add some gold. Now I have to. And it'll, and it'll kind of catch the light, Kim. It'll be fabulous. <laughs> oh. And, and, and Candace, you use resin. Okay. And you use the amazing cast resin. And it takes about 10 minutes to set. I think the resin is a really, really intriguing thing, especially with the cameo, because I do ornaments. I love Christmas decorating. And for the frames, right? These would be beautiful. And maybe, I'm sure you can decoupage over the resin once they're dry. So give it a shot, you guys. Thank you again, Sue, Kim, Candace, Barb. Thank you for joining me today. Go out and create something fabulous and share it in the Painted Cottage Facebook group, all right? Inspire, inspire me. <laughs> Sometimes I look around and I'm like, what can I do? And I go into groups and I'm like, oh, look what they did. And Joni of Weathered Wings is what inspired my giant ostrich eggs. All right, you guys, have a 